Ladies and gentlemen, we are happy to bring a special presentation from the world-renowned golf instructor, David Ledbetter. David has been teaching for over 25 years and has a huge influence on the golf instruction history over the years. David is going to share his latest thoughts on the golf swing and a new system he has developed called the A-Swing. David is joined on stage by Champions Tour player Dennis Watson, winner of the Senior PGA Championship in 2007. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome David Ledbetter. Thank you. Thank you very much, welcome. I'm gonna introduce my co-host uh, of my radio show, Sirius Radio, uh, Dennis Watson. So thanks very much. And uh, as uh, Henry VIII said to his third wife, we won't keep you long. <laughs> uh, now, I, wa I want to in introduce you today to uh, a, a new initiative that, we've, uh, that we're looking at in order to help golfers of every level. We've, we've had it tested. We've had a lot of success. This is not an epiphany I wake, woke up with one morning. It's an extension of what I believe in through the years. I'm certainly not going to throw away 40 years of hard work to just come up with some, some method. And it's really not a method, it's a philosophy and approach. And we really think it could really change the way maybe people think about how the game is taught, because it's a very easy thing to do. We're gonna, I'm not gonna give you the whole story today. The book comes out in May the 15th, but so I'm not trying to push the book right now. If you wanna have a look at it, that's fine. Uh, but the, the fact of the matter is it's, it's just a different initiative. I mean, you know, coaching and teaching has changed a lot through the years. I mean, we analyze things very differently now. Uh, we obviously, you, you, most of you were here for the last session, we spoke about technology, and it's, it's wonderful. But yet, the standard of golf is still not improving. We talk about golf a lot uh, from a good player's perspective. The standard at the highest level is really getting better. But yet, uh, I think, Along amongst the masses, we're seeing people quitting the game. We need to get people more excited about the game, get them into it. When people are playing well, they're much less likely to quit the sport. So Dennis, thanks for joining me. I know you've, uh, you've helped me a lot with this A-swing. Before we get started, I'm gonna show you just a, a little video for a couple of minutes here and just to sort of uh, start the whole proceedings. Hi, I'm David Ledbetter. I've been teaching this great game for over 40 years, and I've written the Ace Wing, which is uh, an evolution of what I've always believed in, having taught some of the world's greatest players. I wanted to bring something up which I felt was really a home run as far as helping people. But I really do think people are gonna see some huge benefits. I think we've brought this all together. We've got over 200 illustrations. It's a very simple book to read, and you'll see in the Ace Wing, it's different from the standpoint of it's more efficient, it's simpler, it's easier for most people to actually incorporate into their games. People have less time to play and practice these days, so the ace wing really shortcuts the time that it takes to really learn to hit the ball more consistently on a regular basis. Voila! The great thing about the ace wing is that it goes right across the board from beginner to tour player. I've spent a couple of years on, on getting this ace wing to the point where it's ready to be published. And right across the board, we've seen some improvement. It's all about swinging more efficiently, making a better backswing in order to make a better downswing. Because if your swing gets more efficient, you're gonna strike it more solidly and see better results. I realize that people don't have a lot of time to play and practice these days. So what you need to do is to concentrate and focus on creating the right feel for the swing. The seven minute practice program is really great. So. I think anybody who wants to improve their golf will find the time to spend seven minutes a couple of times a week to do so. Incorporated with the book are some A-Swing approved training aids, just to be able to feel what the A-Swing is all about, because if you can get that feel through these little training aids, uh, it will really expedite the process for learning the A-Swing. One of the things I wanted to do was not just to say, well listen, this is David Ledbetter stating this, I wanted to have scientific proof here. And my good friend J.J. Reve, who's one of the world's leading biomechanists, and he's tested the A-swing thoroughly over an extensive period of time with a lot of different players. And he says categorically, this is the most efficient way to swing a golf club. That's the great thing about the A-swing. It might change the way that people think how the game should be taught, which as a coach is what my goal is, to help people enjoy the game more, have more fun, and bring more people into the game. As we all know, if people are playing good golf, 
they want to stick at it and get out and play more golf. So that's the goal. Uh, my name's Lydia Ko, and we're at the Live Better Golf Academy. Yeah, I'm really excited about David's new book, The A Swing. Um, there's a lot of good tips in there that I've been using too, so I'm pretty sure everyone will enjoy it. Golf is a very difficult technical game, but with the A Swing, you're going to find it's very easy, very simple. With minimal effort, minimal practice, you can have maximum benefits and play some great golf. To buy the book, to buy the training aid that go along with the book, go to leadbetteraceswing.com. Have fun using the A-Swing. Well, thank you um, for watching that. And uh, Dennis, we'll, we'll talk a little about, a bit about the A-Swing, you know, how, how it came about. I mean, I've been teaching this great game. Dennis, uh, those of you who don't know, Dennis Watson won the World Series of Golf. Uh, what year was that? 19... 1984. 1984. Well, we go back a long way. Won three tournaments on tour. Won the PGA Seniors in 2007, PGA Senior Championship. And uh, Dennis has been sort of uh, my, uh, I suppose, sounding board in many respects. And it's, it's, it's interesting when you look at the golf swing, it, it evolves. And I would say this is an evolution and an extension of what I've always believed in. Uh, when you look at ultimately what this is all about, I say A stands for alternative. It specifically applies to the backswing because I really feel that in golf, the backswing is the most difficult thing for most people to master, even good players. I mean, you think in terms of golf instruction, probably 80% of golf instruction is based around helping somebody get the club back, which when you think about it is crazy because, hey, most, most of the effort should be placed on the downswing. So we go something like this, 10% on the setup, grip, posture, alignment, ball position, that sort of stuff would be 10% on the downswing and probably a huge 80% on the backswing. So in effect, maybe the backswing is too tough for most people to get. And so people who get frustrated, people feel they try this, they try that. As I say, technology is playing an awfully big role, but those numbers come from somewhere. Good players really find it much easier what we call synchronize on the downswing. Now synchronization to me is the big word. The fact is, if you think in terms of two circles, the circle around which the club swings and the circle, the circular motion of the body, these two circles need to be timed together. So the inside and the outside are blended in such a way that when we complete the rotation with our backswing, pretty much the club completes its motion going back. As we change direction, we engage the arms and the hands, and so through, Im through impact, instead of we see many players, especially good players, who wait for the club to catch up, you can actually move in tandem with the release of the club. So the release of the club and the rotation of the body happen in tandem. They, it's a synchronicity. And Dennis, I'm sure, obviously, when you played your best, and I mean, you've experimented with this a lot, and you know, this initiative that we're sort of working on, I mean, in effect, even if you're not playing a lot, which you don't, you've had some injuries, but you find it pretty easy to get back on track, don't you? Well, I think that's been the, the best thing about it, David. Obviously, I've been working on it for, for quite a while, um, the, at least the last 18 months. Uh, two back surgeries. I can't practice like I used to. And I used to love hitting golf balls because there's nothing better than hitting one right out the, right out the middle. So um, what, I've, what I've found is that it only takes me a couple of shots to get loose. Whereas before it used to take a while to find my timing and then start getting into making full swings. So I've found times when I go out to the range now, I hit three or four half and three quarter shots and I go, God, that feels good. And I just let it go. And I, I have no, not as much stress on my body as I used to. And I just, I, I just love it. I mean, I, I look forward to going to hit balls. I don't hit for very long anymore, but I, I hadn't hit balls for three weeks. And I went out the other day, David, honestly, I hit it as good as I had if I'd been practicing for every day for the three weeks. And I was so uh, impressed at how simple it is to keep it in the right spot and keep the sync, as you say. I mean, we all struggle with the synchronization. I think the biggest problem we have in golf is the arms run away from the body, get a little lifty, and then as you start down, the arms and hands stay too high. Well, that's pretty much gone away from me. I used to struggle with that. That's completely gone away. And uh, 
The only thing I, I, I have a problem with is, is uh, trying to just stop myself from hitting too many balls now because I hit them so damn solid. Right. Well, you've always were one of the, the better ball strikers out on tour, no question. Uh, so ultimately, the motto with the A-swing is minimal practice, maximum benefit. And so incorporated with the A-swing, we've sort of devised a practice routine for people whereby it's a, we call it the seven minute practice plan where in seven minutes you can do six little swing exercises to keep the swing in a groove. And that's important because a lot of people just don't have the time to play and practice. As much as information as we have, we've got to simplify it. The way we communicate it's got to be in a simple manner, thereby, hey, people can go out and play. When they do go out and play, they can play decently without overthinking about the golf swing. Obviously, psychology plays a major role. And uh, it's good to see Dr. Bob Winters in the front row here. Dr. Bob Winters teaches with us and coaches players on the mental side of the game. And hey, sports psychologists, they cringe at all this information that's out there today because <laughs> golfers are thinking too much. They can't get out there and relax and play. Now, I'm going to give you a little sort of a, a philosophy here. You know, when we get people coming to the academy and we're looking at the golf swings, we film them, okay, as a lot of people do. We film them, we test them on track, man. And in effect, it's amazing how when a player makes a swing, okay, you look at it and say, wow, there's a lot of moving parts going on there. Where do we start? So what we do is we get somebody to make a little pivot motion. There's variations of the pivot. You can put a club across your chest, uh, fold your arm, put your hands behind your back. There's a lot of variations here. But if you were to make a simple pivot motion and you describe it to somebody, okay, let's move here. And maybe somebody had a little bit of movement here. Say, so, no, just keep a little more weight on the inside of your right foot. But very quickly, they would be able to establish a decent looking pivot motion where, where they rotate, they coil, their weight moves, they move laterally, they move rotary, and this, the pivot motion looks great. Yet, if you compared that same motion when they had a club in their hands, it would look nothing like the pivot motion. So to that end, it has to, it has to be something in the fact that, there has to be something in the fact that the pivot is a reflection of what the hands, arms, and club are doing. So if you see a player, for instance, a good player, okay, who, who does this, they lose their spine angle, they stand up on it. A lot of times that's almost like an insurance policy to actually help the club to catch up because if they actually did stay down and they did rotate, the club would be so late they would never catch up. Instinct is always there, no matter what level of player you are, to try to get the club face back square to the ball. You know, poorer players will do it, by sort of somehow getting their arms and shoulders moving in order to get the club back to the ball. Good players, their hair, their hands and forearms will work in order to try to get the club back square. <coughs> so it's, an <coughs> excuse me, it's all about trying to create a better backswing, a simpler backswing, in order to get the downswing working. Yeah, do you want me to show David what I, what I right. came up with now? I, I remember the other day I was, uh, I know you talked to Gary Player in the airport about six months ago, and uh, I played, uh, might have been longer than six months already, but I, I met Gary at the Legends tournament, and I was having breakfast with him, and he said, I've got it. I've finally got it. And you can imagine this, he's, what's he, 60, 70, Gar No, Gary's 80 this year. 80. Gary Player. 80 yeah. years old. He says, I finally got it. You have to come and watch me hit balls on the range. And he said, I talked to David and I know I've got it now. And he, he took me, I went out on the range to watch him. And Gary sets up in a, in, a, in a certain manner. He's always put his right foot back a little bit, makes it easy to get back. But he took it perfectly in and under like that and low. And he said, look at that. He said, the club face is perfect. He said, I've never had it perfect in my life. And I said, Gary? I think you found it. And you know, I've found, for me, I go on the range now and all I think about is this motion. I mean, we've had this drill for years where you try and put your hands over your shoulders, you put the club over your shoulders and you rotate and you get in a perfect position and then what happens to most people is you pick up the club and you rotate it and their arms lift and they get high and we get a combination of laid off, we get a combination of shut at the top and from there, you start to move downwards 
and your hands are high, and now you have to compensate. And the compensations come in a variety of shapes and forms, don't they, David? Absolutely. I mean, there's, they, they, they come over the top and stop, and you get the club digging into the ground. You get the right hip going back in and under and stopping to try and let the arms drop down. So for, for me, it's, it's completely disappeared now. All I do is I think about my shoulder rotation and I think about, I actually think about swinging from the core. We call it a little bit of the core swing. So if I think about my core and I move from the core and that keeps the club at outside the hands. Now this is the big difference here because in effect, we're trying to find a backswing to complement the natural pivot motion of the body. Think about that. Trying to find a backswing that complements the natural pivot motion of the body. So when Dennis does get to the top there, he's all wound up and he's ready to go. This doesn't require a long swing. In fact, the, sh the arm swing, let's start again, Dennis. The arm swing is actually very short. The wrist action is a slight change in the grip that we've recommended. The shaft plane, you can see. Look at the angle of the shaft there. One of my favorite swingers of all time, if you ever look at Calvin Peet, who's one of the most consistent ball strikers in the history of the game, had the shaft in this angle as he, so the club head never got behind his hands. So as he worked it back here, so at the top of the backswing now, and we could see the position there, we can see it very much. Uh, he's halfway back, this is our model on the right there. We can see the right, you can see the Dennis's left arm is across his chest. In effect, the left arm is moving deep, the shaft is steep, and as Dennis winds up, he finishes his backswing with his wind up, not with his arms. Now as he starts down, now the club is falling on plane. And all he's got to do then is go ahead and release this, rotate his forearm, and boom. And I tell you, we've had slices. I mean, you can stand there until the cows come home and try to get a slicer to get the arms dropping down on the inside and get the club approaching from the inside and hold your back to the target and all the millions of drills that we've used through the years to stop slicing. The only way you can really stop slicing is to have the right movement from the top. When somebody starts to move, the club starts to shallow onto a plane which replicates the plane that you started at address. If you ever get to the top there and this thing starts to get steep, well, good players, if they happen to do that, they'll sort of find a way to try to shallow it. Poorer players will just keep going. And that's why, that's where you see the chicken wings and the club slicing across the ball. So this A swing is really specifically involved in making a simpler backswing. And in the testing that we've done, from an efficiency standpoint, the butt end of the club has traveled about 20% shorter. Now, my, my a simple example, if I'm gonna walk to Dennis here like this, that's the most simple direct route to get to Dennis. Okay, I want you to think in terms of the way I'm walking here is what my, ha my arms, my hands, and my club are doing. So here's, there, once again, here we go. I stand here, perfect. They video me, hey, nice position at the top, okay? Imagine that's the top <laughs> of the backswing right there. Now, now, I could also get there by going like this, okay? I, which a lot of amateurs do, okay? Their swings follow uh, multiple <laughs> tracks and paths, and they end up in the same spot. They say, oh, hey, you look pretty good there. But think of the distance that you've actually traveled in order to get to that point. So in effect, how inefficient is that when the body is sort of rotating and turning in a simple manner, yet the club is going here, 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 and we expect to try to synchronize coming down? Forget about it, it just won't happen. So the, the fact of the matter is, if you can make this backswing more efficient and there's very little rotation in the club, okay, we talk about a slightly different grip and we might explain that just in a minute, but uh, in a sense, as we swing back here, you can see the club head is outside my hands. Now watch the shaft plane here. And we can see it very clearly here to a point where we look at the left picture, the steepness, we look at the, the right picture, the shallowing. And that, if you can, if you look at some of the greats in the history of the game, Jack Nix has had the club up on its end. Johnny Miller had it this way. George Knudsen had it that way. Ryan Moore, Jim Furyk, he has a little more exaggerated, but the fact is, if you get the club up in this position, think of baseball, okay? If you're a batter in baseball, where do they have the bat? Do they start off like this on plane? No, they don't. They start off with a bat up here. As the pitch is coming, they start to move their body. Guess what? As their body moves, the bat flattens onto the plane and they release it. And that's, in essence, this is what this is we're talking about. We're not talking about a big arm lift. In fact, the backswing, this is why it's so good for, excuse me. No one I'm shouting. Okay, the backswing for so many players, 
uh, is so much simpler because it, it travels a short distance. You don't have to make a huge rotation for players that don't have a lot of flexibility. Hey, you can lift the left heel, that's fine. But then from here, as they start their movement, any, any, with the club in balance, any sort of movement gets the club into a shallow, shallowing position where they can go ahead and then release it. You know, I talk about natural swing. The more natural you can do things, the more swing you can have in your swing, the better. And if you look at the greats, I mean, you, why, do, why does everybody like Freddie Couple's swing or Ernie's swing? Because there's so much swing in the swing. Rory McIlroy, probably the best flow in golf right now, no question about it. But if you were to hold the club with two fingers and a thumb and swing it back, just get it started, swing it back, you'll notice there's not a lot of opening going on. There's not a, not a lot of face rotation or shaft rotation. As I let it swing that, look at the club, how it sets. Look at the angle at the top there. The club, if anything, is slightly across the line. You know, so many people have worried for years, oh, I'm too much across the line. Now, if you swing it back like this and get it long and across the line, that's an issue. But if you get to a point where, hey, the club is, sh the arm swing is short and it's slightly across, as I start to move, you, p you put life into the swing. From here, the club can actually swing and release. And it's amazing how when players get this, they put less effort into the swing. They're not pulling and dragging the club through. They're allowing the club to swing. So we've, we've done so much experimentation with this, with good players from beginner to tour player. We've got two beginners we've worked with who literally after six months, they've actually got the club shallowing, which I mean, you know, without sort of trying to force it and swing the arms down, it's just through their natural body motion. And so if we can complement the natural body motion with a natural swing motion, all of a sudden, you've created the right uh, situation for the club to be able to release and be consistently in position through impact. Yeah, David, I like to call it uh, instinctive dynamics. I mean, everybody talks about dynamics in the golf swing and creating speed and all of those things. But if your arms are high at the, at the top of the swing, you've got to do some different things that interfere with the dynamics of the club. There's got to be some sort of pulling the club back down in a lot of a lot of players have played that way they get a lot of rotation get the arms very high they actually slow their legs down pull their arms back down in and then fire and you know obviously they've been successful but for me I've found this motion is just so efficient going the short distance to the top of the swing it just goes what I call in and under boom right at the and top and you notice here at the top of the back swing you know, you talk about one plane swings, et cetera, et cetera. Dennis's arm plane is below his shoulder plane. So he's got a flat arm swing, which if we go halfway back, but a very steep shaft plane. And that puts the, even though as he swings it back here, the club face may look closed, from this point on, because of the vertical nature of the plane, at the top of the backswing, the club hangs beautifully. And you'll notice at the top of the backswing, he has this symmetrical look but, but at the back of his wrists. And this is one area we look at. We try to get the, the grip in such a position where the left hand is reasonably strong, the right hand is reasonably weak, and you create this sort of prayer or butterfly look. And at, at the top of the backswing, if you notice the Dennis there, this is still very much in view. Have a look here. So he's got that same look, club face hangs. Now as he starts down, he's got that club in a very neutral position. Some people say, well, that face looks open. Well, it's open compared to most players who are trying to shut the face down in order not to hit the ball to the right. Now from here, Dennis is simply going to rotate his left side out of the way. This is where sort of the, the wrist starts to flatten out as, in an, as, as we speak about or we've spoken about for years. And then from here, the release now happens in such a way that the right hand actually plays a very active role in, in releasing the club. Most people don't, re don't really understand how to release the club. If you're in a good position, Watch my right hand here, folks. Look where my right hand goes. My right hand is under my left. You only have to watch Adam Scott and to see that. So many players hang on to it here, and yeah, they haven't flipped over before they've made contact, but then from here, this thing does this, and you see that time and time again. So it's almost as if they've got this little hang on through impact. So one of the drills that we like to use, which is very simple, you just split your hands. It's an old drill, but split your hand. And you can feel, watch as I go back here, look how my right arm stays on top of my left arm. Club face hasn't opened up. Club head stays outside my hands, outside my hands, outside my hands. And you can see, now I'm complete. My body rotation is complete, the swing is complete. As I start down, 
my lower body starts to move. I move into my left side. You can see naturally the club starts to shallow. From here, I rotate down to impact. From here, I actually go ahead and release. And it's a, it's a very simple approach. I mean, people who've sliced, who've had this sort of wicked over the top movement for years, and you look on track, man, it's like, well, 14 degrees from the outside, you're six degrees down with your driver. It's like, whoa, how does anybody play golf from there? The interesting thing is once somebody understands the sequence of motion, if they can get in sync, it's unbelievable how you see straight away the shaft starts to shallow. And initially, I've had quite often when a, a player who's a complete slicer, once they have the club in a, in a halfway decent position coming down, they actually shank it because they're, they're so used to trying to swing into out or do something to correct where the club faces, their hands get further away from their body and they hit it right out of the hosel. And so once they understand, okay, from this position here, we sort of match up the circles coming through and we release it, all of a sudden now they've got this sort of inside track to the ball where the club face is closing down and all of a sudden we've got this nice little draw. So that in essence, is the A-swing. I mean, the A-swing is, uh, I think, uh, it's something, it's an approach that it's very simple to teach. It's very simple to learn. Uh, and we've had some great success. I, I certainly wouldn't jeopardize my career and thinking in terms of, hey, I'm bringing something wacky out. And it'll be a little controversial, which is fine. Uh, people are always sort of thinking, well, you know, that that's goes against tradition. Yeah, it does go against tradition a little bit. But some of the, I mean, if you look at, say, a Calvin Pete who never, ever rotated the club face going back and sort of had this beautiful movement back to impact here. He looked like Ben Hogan through impact. I mean, this guy led the driving statistic for 10 years in a row. Go and check on the records there from, from the uh, uh, sort of mid-80s to mid-90s or maybe a, a little bit before, maybe 83 to 93, somewhere around there. But he led greens in, in regulation for six years in a row. And I don't actually think he knew what he did. He actually had a broken left arm, which sort of, sort of helped this whole thing happen. But we, as I said, we've seen some tremendous results from, from every level of player. This young fellow here is actually on the web.com tour. He's been our model. And uh, we can see one of the, one of the areas that we emphasize is to make sure, and this is a big killer with so many golfers, how many golfers do we see, amateurs who roll the club away? Keeping the hands in and the club out is one of the key elements to the, the, the start of the backswing. So we've, we've covered quite a bit there, Dennis. I mean, it's, uh, we've given them maybe a little teaser. We, we might have any, any questions here just for a minute or two. We've got, uh, we only got a few minutes left, but if you have any questions, I mean, it's, uh, a lot of people look at it and say, why is he nuts? No, I'm not, I, I can tell you, because I have a passion to really help people. And there are a lot of people out there who, let's face it, need help. We need to bring people into the game. If we're gonna keep working uh, instruction as if it's just for top players, for tour players, then the masses are really, really going to suffer. Hey, we've got a microphone there for you, sir. Thank you for this so much. I had the good pleasure to go to a clinic with about four of their folks Saturday at TPC Tampa with Kelly Murray. And you know Kelly, the Canadian who's followed Mo Norman so closely. Right. And a lot of what you just showed reminds me a lot of what Kelly was talking about in terms of the very simple hammer to nail natural golf swing. You see any uh, comparisons with Kelly and Mo's swing? Well, Mo's swing obviously was is very much sort of a, a sort of one plane type of look there, you know, a little bit more extension. But I think the, the one thing that you look at, I mean, what Mo did so well, he synchronized well. Do we change everybody? No, we don't, it's not every, hey, this is not for everybody. If we look at a player, and they're beautifully synchronized, they're able to get the club back in front of them and their club's releasing correctly and we're seeing a good pattern to the shots. Why would you want to change them? So it's not everybody we change. And we look at certain players and you say, well, you know what, maybe it doesn't quite suit them. But I can tell you, a ma the majority of players, and you only have to look at sort of young Lydia Ko who exhibits a lot of these traits in her swing. Uh, but the one thing with Mo and all, everything he did, he was, he was very well synchronized as he, as he completed his backswing. Things were going this way. There was no run on in his swing. And obviously at impact, it was very much sort of back in position. They limit maybe the wrist action. I think that most players maybe need a little more wrist action than what Mo described. But, uh, you know, philosophies are philosophies. In the end, hey, how do we get that club face back to the square 
ma traveling at maximum speed down the target line <coughs> on a regular basis. And I can tell you, we've just had some, I mean, I'm excited about it. And so the book's coming out in the middle of May, uh, The Golf Swing, uh, was my first book back in 1990. Uh, so we've come a long way since then. But this really is an evolution and extension of what I've always believed in. I've always believed in good setup. I've always believed in uh, a short arm swing. I've always believed in a steeper plane going back and a shallower plane coming down. I've always believed in the lower body leads the upper body coming down. So it's not too far away from my roots. That's the thing I'm excited about. It's not like, hey, this is a complete transformation for me. And so, Dennis, uh, there we have it. Yeah, David, uh, it's, it is an exciting time, I think, for, for golf and golf learning. And I think any amateur can actually pick up this book, l actually look at the movements, and actually start to, to, to start to figure out. I mean, it's pretty simple to understand when you start talking about the V plane. That yeah, the, the V club plane goes really from is here it's a, it's a, to here. It's a, it's a philosophical plane, if you will, where it's this angle going back and that angle coming down. And I say we. We've had some, just, it's been, it's been remarkable, I really, I mean, I, I've, we've got tour players, literally a tour player who, Greg Kraft, who says, man, who's now getting on the championship, says, when I get this right, when I sink, I hit it 50 yards longer. You imagine a tour player saying I hit it 50 yards longer? We've heard that from, you know, people who've tried new Callaway drivers and stuff, but that's, that's freakish, it really is. Yeah, we've heard that from tour players before, but if his caddy hadn't been there and saying, yeah, if right. I hadn't been there and seen it myself, I would have told him he was lying. Right. But he said, David, I've seen it. It's unbelievable. Right. So, you know, for Greg, I remember his golf swing. It was a little, always a little bit loose. He always had trouble synchronizing his legs with his arms. And uh, he said, he, he told me on the phone, I don't have that trouble anymore. He said, it's unbelievable. Well, Dennis, I want, we want to make a little presentation here. We've got a, a young lady here. I say young lady, and I mean that sincerely, uh, who has won over 200 golf tournaments. Wow. Okay, this lady who... Uh, um, I introduced to a product called Juvent, uh, and the president of Juvent Sports is going to come out with her. Juvent Sports uh, is uh, all about skeletal impact, where you stand on it, and people with arthritis and problems with knees, all sorts of athletes are on it now. You can go see Juvent. Uh, there's a stat, the booth called Juvent, and I want to. I'd like to bring out Arlene McGittrick. Arlene, who uh, <laughs> nice to see you there, Arlene. Great nice to, to see, see you, too. and Arlene. Uh, she she uses the A swing. She's she can attest to it has worked, right? Oh, it is so magnificent. Now, I you don't have to be a too much of a push here, Ali, but, 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 but no, I, I but know really, she's, she's but our biggest promoter. But I, I feel like the A-swing has given me the fountain of youth for golf. It has really <laughs> helped me. Well, that's great. And I know uh, working on the Juvent with uh, Peter Simonson, the president of Juvent Sports, uh, we've got a little award for you here, uh, Arlene. So, uh, Peter, I'd like you to make the presentation, if you would. Arlene, you are an inspiration not only to golfers, but to all of us. Because before you're winning your last 30 tournaments, you beat arthritis and osteoporosis. And we at Team Juvent Sports just want to say how much we acknowledge, appreciate you, and you've won 204. We know there's a whole lot more coming. There you are, Arlene. You're an inspiration. Well done, Arlene. Well, listen, I want to thank all of you very much for attending. I know it's been a long... Uh, couple of days so far, you've got one more day to go. But anyway, if you have any thoughts on this, go to leadbetteraceswing.com. You'll see some testimonials, some little teasers out there. Say so the book will be out in uh, May. And hopefully, my, my hope is that it's really going to help players play this game better, quicker, and uh, teach us to think more in terms of, hey, maybe there's a slightly different way. Maybe we can do something a little differently to help the masses of players play the game that we really love. So thank you, Dennis. Appreciate it. Thanks, David. And uh, all of you, thank you very much.